God bless you. This is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. Welcome you to the program once again now in the heart of January. Oh my gosh, here we are in the winter time, but nevertheless, God is still good. We, we're, we're huddling together, if you will, throughout the winter here in January uh, for a very special time of prayer and consecration. Uh, and God has been heating us up. God has been meeting us. God is blessing. And you are invited to join us. We often spend, always actually spend this time of year, this month uh, in prayer preparation, preparation for the remainder of the year. We kind of give God this first month uh, and expect for him to uh, really move us and uh, show us what's going to happen in the next 11. I believe that, you know, in order to really do achieve something, you first have to have a plan. You have to have a strategy. And so oftentimes, even when it comes to seeing God move in your life, you have to get aligned. Every now and then we have to stop and get aligned because we can sometimes drift. We can get involved in other things. We can get distracted. And there comes a time when we have to pause and really truly connect with God, hear his voice and move forward. That's what we're doing this month. We've been doing it from the beginning and we continue on now. And we invite you to come and be a part of it. Come and join us here at Destiny Preparation Church. Uh, we have service taking place on Wednesdays as well as on Sundays and uh, a, a special service happening on Friday the 25th. That's next Friday. We're going to be here for a special prayer uh, service. It's a culmination of the week and it'll be taking place on next next Friday, this coming Friday uh, at 7 p.m. You're invited to come and join us here at Destiny Preparation Church and get ready to just let go. I mean, truly just let go in the presence of God. We expect the miracles. We expect the anointing. We expect a prophetic word. We expect God to speak to us as a whole and as in individuals. Bring your family. Let's pray over your family uh, this weekend. Let's pray for you and what God is doing in your life. We'll pray for your healing. We'll pray for your deliverance. And we will pray our way through to the presence of God. Come and join us this weekend at Destiny Preparation Church. Now I'm going to take you to uh, part two of the sermon we started last week, A Strong finish uh, as we now uh, make that transition from 2018 into 2019 we want need to understand we can't quit we've got to keep going it's not how you start it's how you finish so I pray this blesses you and I pray that you'll come and join us real soon God bless you look to see you here at Destiny Preparation sometimes you got to get ready to get stronger yourself for what the enemy listen understand this when we're working on the wall and we're working as a team, the devil is going to look for the weakest link. Uh-huh. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Amen. I may not be able to pick that one off, but if I can tick with this one and mess with that one over there, amen, there's still going to be some gaps that need to be full. You've got to get strong enough to stand up on the wall and hold your ground. Oh, I wish somebody was with me today. Listen, tell somebody there's still more to come from you. Come on, tell them there's still more to come from you. God's got more to come out of you. And you've got to get ready to let God move in you like he wants to move. Right. Hallelujah. We got to be prepared. It says here that the enemies came and they came now threatening to kill. They came stronger than before. You made it this far, but the enemies came stronger than before. But now it says in verse 9, two things that I want you to gather. Amen. It says, but we prayed to our God. Listen, we pray. That's why anytime you are in spiritual warfare, you have to maintain prayer. The worst thing you can do is start thinking it's all about you. <laughs> start getting too comfortable. Start thinking, oh, we've made it now and, and I don't have to worry about that as more. Listen, you better pray harder than you have ever prayed before. We need to hold it together. Like We need people joining together on Wednesday nights like never before. We need to be on the phone line on Saturday. Like We need to be here on Sunday morning. Somebody don't even have to tell you, amen, before service starts, in the name of Jesus. I plead the victory. I'm praying that God is going to come through. Somebody's going to need a word today. And Lord, I'm lifting you up, and I want to see God move in this place. We break the yoke of the enemy. We come against every, every vile spirit, and we lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody's got to get ready, amen, to pray like they never prayed before. Hallelujah. It said we prayed. Amen. We prayed. The enemy is coming against you. The enemy is doing all he's going to do. What's your response? I'm going to pray. <laughs> the enemy starts lying. There, there, there's confusion coming up in the camp. God is trying. People are trying to separate us. But you know what I'm going to do about it? I'm going to pray. It, it looks like we don't have the resources. It looks like we're coming to a halt. It looks like there are attacks coming in every way. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to pray. 
But I want you to grab the second part of this. It says, we prayed unto our God and guarded the city day and night. We're not just leaving it to God because God put you here for something. God wants to use you. Amen. I'm not just putting them in your hands, God. I am lifting them up every day. I'm pleading the blood on them every day. I, I'm getting out my oil every day. Every time they think they're tired of me, I'm still praying for you. I'm still lifting you up. I'm still holding the blood saying, I'm still believing God's going to break the yokes. Amen. I'm praying for my children when they don't want to hear it. Amen. When they're tired of it, I'm getting the oil out and I'm anointing beds and doorposts and I'm anointing bathrooms and everywhere you sleep, I'm anointing pillows everywhere they place their head. I'm praying, amen, that God is going to do something. And I'm going to be on guard against the enemy. I'm not just waiting for God to do it. I'm still declaring it myself. It said they prayed and they went on guard. Amen. They, they, they would look, look, look. The, the Bible, if you read the story, it says they divided in half. And half of them worked and half of them guarded. Half of them worked nailing and putting things together, and the other half were on guard. For the whole second half, amen, we didn't need it in the first half, but we got to raise up the ante now because the enemy's really trying to mess with us. He's really trying to stir things up. So guess what? You're assigned to work, and you're assigned to pray. And then we're going to switch positions, and you do work, and you pray. We are not stopping. We are not quitting until we get the victory. We're going to pray our way through. Saints of God, there are times when we have to guard the doors. We have to guard, amen, the perimeter, amen, not letting the enemy in. We got to be on, on spot watch, amen. I think I see the devil trying to sneak in over here because sister so-and-so said she's sick. That ain't nothing but the devil, amen. God has something for her to do. We're going to pray and lift her up right now in the name of Jesus. I see somebody over there in trouble, amen, they're disturbed, amen. Look, I'm not going to let them just sit in the midst, amen, and be disturbed. No, no, devil, you can't sit here like that. We're on guard right now, and I rebuke the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's struggling. They're on the fringe. They're kind of in, but they're kind of out. Amen. They're here one week. They're gone the next. I'm not just going to let that happen. I'm on guard duty, and that one's my responsibility. So I'm calling you up and telling you, come on, let me pick you up for church. Let me take you out for a meal. Let's talk together. Let's pray for a moment. What do you need? Amen. I've got to help somebody to make it through this battle. Are y'all hearing me today? We got to get ready. Amen. Amen. To, to, to be stronger than ever before, to stretch out than ever before. The enemies might be bigger than they've ever been before, which means we've got to be more prepared than ever. We've got to be prepared spiritually. Amen. For the enemy, we've got to be prepared emotionally because how many of you know the devil will mess with your emotions? He will mess with your mind. He will get you so confused. He will have you up today and down tomorrow. Amen. He'll have you mixed up trying to figure out which way is up. Amen. Why am I doing this again? Who am I? I feel so lonely. Anybody I feel anybody been there? I'm so lonely. Nobody but me. The devil puts you in depression. He puts you, amen, in suicidal watch. He'll put you in all kind of mess. You've got to be stronger than you've ever been before. You've got to be prepared more than you've ever been before. That's why I'm here to call you to notice. Amen. That the devil may be coming against you, but you've got to see him for who he is. You've got to be prepared. Tell somebody be prepared. be prepared. Tell them don't get caught off guard because the devil will try and mess with you. And he'll mess with you where you're vulnerable. He'll mess with you in your weak spot. He'll mess with you where he know he can hurt you. He'll mess with you where he knows you get confused easily. He'll mess with you where, when the things that have worked in the past, trying to get you off guard. But you've got to stay on the wall. Came to declare to you today it takes a strong finish you can't get halfway there and then get tired and, and and then you know start giving up and letting go you've got to you've got to pace that thing all the way through to the end the bible talks about running the race that's set before us we run an endurance race this thing isn't an overnight thing it's not a one day thing amen we are running the race of life and we have to be in it every day we have to keep pacing through it until we get to where god is taking us but i want you to understand many times the hardest time is when you get close to the end 
Any runners in here? Anybody know, amen, what it is to run an endurance race? The hardest times, you know, you get into a zone during it, uh, but if you run long enough, amen, the closer you get to the end, uh, it just seems like you get to the end and you feel like you just don't have anything left. I, I know I just got a little bit left. I've gone this far. Far. Amen. I've gone 25 miles and I only got one more left. I've gone five miles and I only got a half a mile left. I just got a little bit longer. I can almost see where the end of it is. And sometimes you feel, amen, just so tired. And even though the end is right there, you feel like quitting. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Well, I know I've gone along, but I'm not really thinking about, amen, where I've been through. All I'm thinking about is how much further it is to that end. And I don't know if I have enough to make it. Anybody ever felt like quitting? But I want you to understand it takes a strong finish. It takes a, a strong kick to get to the end. That last little bit requires that kick. You got to learn how to kick it up when you feel like you're about to give up and quit. Sometimes you just eat. I don't, doesn't even make sense to me, but I just got to start kicking those legs. Those, the legs don't even feel like moving, but I just start pulling them out. I just start lifting up because that kick at the end causes you to change gears into a, another place. When you think you've got nothing left, that's when you got to pull that kick up and you'll find, amen, when you thought you had nothing left, all of a sudden you find yourself pushing, amen, like you never imagined you could. There is still energy inside of you that you didn't conceive was there. There's still something inside of you left for the end of the journey. You've got to have a strong finish to get through what God is putting you through. Get through what the devil is trying to do to you. Amen. You cannot quit now. Tell somebody you cannot quit now. Amen. You've come too far to come on. Somebody help me. Amen. You've come too far. Amen. To give up now. Amen. Instead of giving up, instead of quitting, it's time to start kicking. Tell somebody it's time to start kicking. You may not feel like it. You may in your mind think it's all over, but instead of falling down to the ground, just start that kick. Just start kicking out. Just start stretching out those legs. Like you, you may not think there's anything left, but you'll find that there's still some energy left to make it to the end. You've got to have a strong finish. You can't quit now. The devil's saying stop, but oh no, it's time for a strong finish. I'm not just dragging over the line. I'm going to kick my way over the line. I'm going to do in the last mile, amen, more than I did in the first five because down on the inside, there's still something to give me the strength to go forward. Tell somebody strong finish. You need a strong finish. Tell somebody don't quit. Come on, help me out. Tell somebody don't quit. Tell them start kicking. Tell them start kicking. Tell them start kicking. Don't quit. Start kicking. Don't quit. Start kicking. Kick is kick through that trouble. Kick through that depression. Kick through that sorrow. Kick through those fears. Kick through those lies. Kick through the enemy's attacks. You start kicking. Tell somebody start kicking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not over. Amen. It may look like it's a ways away, but God has strength for you to go through. God has something stored up inside of you that you don't even know that's there. You might think you're about ready to end it, but God says, keep kicking, keep kicking, keep kicking. Just stretch out on me. Let me show you what I've truly put inside of you. God has energy in you. You don't even know. God has reserves in you. You don't even know about. All you need to do is just start kicking. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm going to start kicking. And when I start kicking, God will give you the strength to make it through the end. Tell somebody you need a strong finish. Tell them it's not over. It's not over. You've got to kick your way to the end. Well, I wish somebody would find somebody and just declare to them right now, you need to start kicking. Just tell three people right now, start kicking, start kicking, start kicking. Don't quit yet. Just start kicking, start kicking. How are y'all going to reach three people sitting down? Come on, get up and declare to somebody, start kicking right now. Start kicking, start kicking. Don't quit yet. Start kicking because your victory is just a, a little bit of ways. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Just start kicking. When you feel like you should quit, start kicking. When you feel like it's all over, start kicking. Start declaring, the Lord is on my side. 
Get your kick going. Get your kick going. Get your kick going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going slower. I'm going faster. I'm not falling down. I'm rising up. I'm putting all I've got left in it. And God is going to supply everything that I need. You need a strong finish. You need a strong finish. I'm not just barely making it over the line. I'm coming hurling over that line. Hallelujah. You ever, you ever see one of those, you ever see one of those shows where they show the people and they're finishing the race and the people are coming up to the line and they think they're almost done and oh, they're slowing down and all of a sudden somebody comes from behind them, just kick him and runs right past him and gets to the line before they end? Listen, you don't have time to just drag over. You need to start kicking because when the devil tells you the race is over, God says it's not over. Just start kicking because I'm going to give you what you need to make it through. Strong finish. Don't you, don't you just, just, just barely make it. I'm not, don't you even declare that. I, oh, I thank God. I just, oh, oh, I barely made it over. I'm glad I made it just another day. Oh, God kept me another night. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You better get to kick him. Hallelujah. I, I'm not just going to barely make it. I'm going to, I'm going to open up the windows. I'm going to shatter the gates. I'm coming through. Tell the devil I'm coming through. I'm coming through. You better watch out because I'm coming through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm coming through. Hallelujah. Devil rises up his head against you and causes you to think, oh man, I, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do this. I admire these people because when the devil came up, amen, they had a great leader because when everybody, you know how it, everybody gets scared and afraid and, and scrambled and I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, he, he, he said, look, we, mm -mm, I'm not coming down from the wall. I'm not stopping this work. Amen. Listen, you get all kind of reasons why you should quit. Mm -hmm. You get all, oh God, the reasons just keep on coming. Here's another reason why I should stop. Another reason I should give up. They just keep rolling in. But he said, look, regardless, I don't care. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. Listen, they said, the, the, if you read the rest of the story, they were trying to get him to come down. Then when they went, got ready to fight and they heard he was ready, they said, well, we can't hit him head on. So let's do that. Let's get him to come to us. And so they started sending letters to Nehemiah. Hey, we need you to come out and we want to talk to you about this. We, and no, no, you, you're just trying to come get me out there so you can get me alone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you, you're trying to get me alone. Sometimes, no, I'm, I'm not alone. I, I've got people praying with me. I've got prayer warriors on my side. I'm not in this alone. Amen. We're praying together. We're pleading the blood together. Don't listen. Don't let the devil get you alone. Mm-hmm. Because that's when he messes with you at night. That's when he messes you, amen, while you try to sleep. That's when he messes with you and puts all that kinds of thoughts in your mind. Don't let the devil get you alone. And then when he couldn't get him to come down, then he tried to use psychology on him. He said they sent him a letter. The Bible says, Nehemiah says, he, the, the, he sent his servant with an open letter. It's not private for you to go, so just go read. He sent an open letter. He wanted everybody to hear what was said and he said he said that you know we we've heard that you are are sending out a word that you are trying to finish these walls and you're going to become king and, and that you have set up your own prophets that you've paid off inside the walls to declare here comes the king of jews now understand they're under the leadership under the authority uh, uh, of babylon and so there's no setting up your own kingdoms and so they're saying these words out there just like trump people are saying People, I, I don't know who's saying it. People are saying that, that you're trying to be king. And, and you need to understand that if, if you don't do something about this, this is going to get back to, to the king in Babylon, and, and it's going to be a problem for you. So you ought to come out here and talk to us about this. They try to use psychology. Come on out here, because if you don't, uh, this is going to be bad for you. And he, read the, he, he heard the letter. He said, y'all know y'all lying, and, and, and I know you're lying, and I, I'm not f going for it. I am not coming down from this wall. Say what you want to say. Do what you're going to do. We're on guard because in case you show up, and, but we're not coming down and we're not stopping. Sometimes you have to have a hard, fixed mindset that I am not going to stop until it's finished. Half the wall is worth celebrating, but the wall ain't finished yet. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Making it to a certain point is a great achievement. Yeah. 
But the wall's not finished yet. Not only is the work not done, but it also means that we're not safe yet. Because we're still vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. You cannot quit halfway there. You have to keep going until the work is finished. And I'm here to declare to you that when you get into the next phase of the race, there may be bigger devils, bigger demons, but that doesn't mean that you quit. That means you got to get ready to fight on a whole nother level. That means your faith has to raise up to a whole nother level. That's why some of us are challenged and, and tasked. It's, it's training ground. It's training before you enter into warfare. Because if you can't trust God with this, how are you going to trust him when the real devil shows up? You can't trust him in the house of God to surrender to him. How are you going to trust him when the devil faces you outside the house of God? If you can't believe God in his own house, how are you going to believe him when you get out in the streets? Amen. You've got to learn how to raise up to the next level of faithfulness and confidence and trust in God. Amen. So that you're ready to fight the battle that the enemy's going to bring because he's going to bring it. He's bringing it because he does not want you to get away. He doesn't want you to escape. But you're going to have to be ready to fight. And you need to learn, amen, how to put that strong finish in there. Because there may be times when you're tired. Times when you just don't know if you can go any further. But understand that God has strength in you that you don't even know is there. God has resources lined up along the way. You ever see anybody running the marathon and as they're running along, there's somebody on the side with some water over there. And you get down a little bit further, somebody, there's resources along the way that they didn't even know were going to be there. God has resources lined up along the way. So every time you think you are just about out of energy, he knows the right time to replenish you, to feed back into you what you're going to need for the journey. But you need to understand, amen, the devil wants to destroy you. That's his desire. If he can't have you, he'll kill you. Mm, anybody ever heard that before? There are some people that talk like that because that's the devil in them. If I can't have you, I'll kill you. That's the devil talking. And that's the way the devil treats you. If he can't, if I can't have you, if you're not going to stay on my side, I will destroy you. I'll destroy your mind. I'll destroy your peace. I'll destroy your comfort. I, I will destroy everything. If I can't have you. That's why you got to be ready. To fight the battle. It's, it's not just going, it's not always just going to just, just, just happen overnight. The devil isn't just going to just, just let go of you after he's had you at a certain level. He's going to be trying to hang on to you. That's why we see so many people that come into the house of God. They come into church and they have a mindset. I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to get changed. And it's three weeks. I always say three weeks. They come three weeks. And within three weeks, the devil will try and pull them right back out. Pull them right, right back to where they came. All of a sudden, hell starts breaking loose in the house. All of a sudden, things start messing up. Cars, relationships, friends, jobs start twisting and turning around because the devil does not want to let you go. So you cannot just relieve, release in, in a moment and think it's over. Because the see, see what I'm talking about? The devil will try and throw you off from what God is trying to do in your life. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Just when you think you are ready, amen, to, to give in to God, the devil will bring any distraction he can. And he knows what you're vulnerable to. He knows what you, you're weak to. He knows what, where your, your, your gaps are in your wall. And he will come at those gaps at you to try and draw you off from where God is trying to take you to. But you got to finish this thing strong. You can't give up. You can't quit. Whatever it takes. Tell somebody whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, God. You can't always be like everybody else. Everybody else is getting along okay. We're just coming one day a week. Mm. Maybe not you. 
uh, what you're dealing with, I, I need to be in the house of God more. I need, I need more. I need more at home. I need to, uh, everybody's just hearing a sermon. I need to take the sermon home with me. I need to listen to it again. I need to hear what God is saying. I need to open up the word for myself. I need to reread this scripture. I need to understand what was being said here to me. You, you've got to be ready to go to your next level. When you're a child, you expect to be spoon-fed. But when you grow up, you got to learn how to start supplying your own food. Amen? Amen. Somebody say next level. If you're going to truly be used by God, you got to step it up. Tell somebody you got to step it up. To let God really do in you. What he really wants to don't don't get settled. No, no matter what level, I don't care how many years you've been saved. I don't know how many time care how many times you've read the Bible from head to, to from cover to cover. I don't care, you know, what kind of anointing you had, had, had. I don't care what kind of experience you've had with the Lord. You cannot live off of yesterday's food. You have to grow each and every day, and you have to get stronger. 